you all. Thank you for tapping with me again today. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Cleveland. So welcome to the Fish Corner, everybody. If you are new to the channel, do a few things for me real quick. I want you to go down below, hit that subscribe button right next to it. Got the notification bell. It's a little bell. Hit that notification bell and then get a video a like. It looks like a thumbs up just like this. Now let's get into this video. So I want to talk to you all about something that I've been dealing with as of late. A comment really triggered this video right here. Um, so it don't matter how long you've been in a hobby, you could always learn something new. And um, the comment that I had, I was speaking to one of the viewers, and they did not believe that the buddy Comfrey was dealing with swim bladder issues, swim bladder trauma, anything that had to do with the swim bladder at all. They thought that if a fish had swim bladder issues, it would be floating up towards the top of the aquarium. Now, although those are sometimes a sign and symptoms of a fish with swim bladder issues, it could look many a different ways. You could have a fish that's on its side on the bottom of the tank and just can't right himself. You could have a fish upside down in your aquarium and again, it can't right himself. You can have a fish that just sits on the bottom of the aquarium and it could come up and grab food, but then it comes drop, drops right back down to the substrate. Now, one of the things that you might notice from everything that I've said, the fish isn't doing what? Floating. Exactly. A fish should be able to float. It should be buoyant. It should be upright. Now, granted, fish will do tricks and cartwheels and swimnastics and things like that they could do backflips they could do all these different things inside of the water but one thing that one thing that they will constantly do is come back and be sitting appropriately in the aquarium they'll come back upright floating acting normal looking normal right if you notice those characteristics in your fish you should make sure you do your due diligence to try to diagnose it properly, right? If you have a fish and you're examining it and it looked like it's having swim bladder issues based on the symptoms that I just described, you can look and see if your fish has damage to its abdomen, right? If a fish was in an aquarium with another aggressive fish and the other fish attacked their swim bladder, you would see damage to the abdomen. Also, if the fish accidentally hit a rock in the aquarium, any of the decor, you might see damage to the abdomen. If you don't see any of those issues on your fish and you believe your fish to have swim bladder issues, it might be a problem with your water quality. See, swim bladder issues could come from disease. It could come from bad water quality. It could come from trauma, whether it be from another fish whether it be from hitting the decor, anything like that. I've been keeping fish for 31 years. I haven't experienced or I didn't experience swim bladder issues until the past 12 years when I started keeping large aggressive cichlids. Since keeping large aggressive cichlids, I have come across a wide array of different situations where my fish has swim bladder issues or trauma. Issues being the disease when I was just getting back in the hobby and I didn't understand that these extra large cichlids or extra large fish need the proper filtration so my water quality might not have been what it should have been, leading to swim bladder issues. I've had, I bought brand new fish and put them in an aquarium and then it gets chased around by one of the larger aggressive fish and the, fit, the new fish hit a few rocks, rupturing the swim bladder, upside down, passes away within minutes. I bought fish or have had fish together that, attack, that has attacked each other. And fish are very smart. They will go after the swim bladder of other fish. You've seen that with my giant red-tailed garami recently. You've seen that with my buddy Kofari. And trust me, over the course of 12 years, with me keeping these large, these large aggressive fish, I have definitely seen my share of fish picking on another fish, going after the swim bladder, resulting in one of the fish passing away. 
It's all about experience, right? So, like I was telling the viewer earlier, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the hobby. It's about your experience with these different situations that allow you to come up with a way to explain it, a way to understand it, and then a way to diagnose it a lot faster, a lot faster than you would have if you never had the experience at all. So I want you to just keep all of those things in mind whenever you come you come across a fish that might actually have have swim bladder issues. You know, it's not just, like I said, it's not just from disease and bad water quality. Trauma is a very big part of your fish having swim bladder issues because all the swim bladder is, it's like a balloon in your fish body that helps it stay buoyant, help it stay upright. So anything hitting it, the fish hitting something against it, or again, like I said, the water quality, the disease, your fish could potentially have swim bladder issues. Now, it's not always fatal. There are instances where a fish can't come back from it. My buddy Carl Fry over there, you've seen in the video, he was upside down and then he righted himself. He's been upright since then. Now, there was a time last night when I came in here and he was doing a doing a face, doing a um, lip stand in the aquarium. But for the most part, he's sitting upright, but he is still sitting on the bottom of the aquarium. He's not out of the woods yet. Big Garami, as of recent, he just couldn't, he couldn't get it together. He just never was able to just stay upright. He could for a second, get some air, then he was back upside down, back on his back. It was sad. Very, very sad. Swim bladder disease and swim bladder issues can take a long time to cause your fish to pass away naturally. They end up starving to death. A lot of the times from the swim bladder issues. They can starve to death. So how long do you think it will take for a healthy fish to starve to death? Especially a big one. It could take days, weeks, possibly months. So that's why it's very important to do your research, understand what's going on with these fish, learn from other people, so you could diagnose your fish faster, expeditiously, expeditiously. So that way, if it is a situation where it's a completely destroyed swim bladder ruptured or whatever the case may be, and your fish will just never right itself, you could do the right humane thing by euthanizing it. I think it's sometimes torture how we can keep a fish just to the point to where they starve and then they perish from that. Like I said, it could take such a long time. So um, this was a, a topic that I feel like that we all could benefit from. Either you have encountered a fish with swim bladder issues, whether it be trauma or disease, or it could be something that you will experience in the future. And then now you have a way of understanding it and you will know what to look for a lot sooner, right? So I hope that you all enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you were inspired by something. Please do something for me. If you are new to the channel, go down below. What I need you to do, I need you to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell right next to it. And uh, everybody, if you like the video, like the damn video. Peace.